Tom here from Lawrence Systems, and I wanted to answer the question that gets asked a lot. Will XCPNG work with a Ryzen system? And can you have RGB on it? Well, that's not necessary, but yes. Uh, this is not destined uh, to live as an XCPNG server. This is actually a client build that we're waiting on some parts for. But while we're waiting, I said, well, let's load XCPNG, one, for some testing. I want to make sure everything works. Two, I want to know how well does XCPNG work with a, you know, MSI X470 and a Ryzen CPU. I've generally covered XCPNG on more enterprise level builds or even used enterprise hardware. But what does it look like on, you know, more consumer hardware or gaming hardware? And it turns out it works really well. Uh, before we dive into that, let's go with first. If you'd like to learn more about me and my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire a short project, there's a hire us button right at the top. If you want to support this channel in other ways, there's affiliate links down below to get you deals and discounts on products and services we talk about on this channel, including a link to our Patreon if you'd like to become a Patreon supporter. We also have a swag store where you can get shirts and other items that are for sale, and that changes from time to time what's available and what's not, so go ahead and check that out frequently. And finally, our forums. If you'd like to have a more in-depth discussion about this video, suggestions for new videos, or just reach out, say hi, and talk tech, our forums are a great place for that. All right, now back to the content. Okay, let's start with the stats. First, this is the Ryzen 9 3900X. Like I said, the X470 board. It's got a one terabyte MVME. There's no RAID array or anything set up on this, and 32 gigs of RAM. It's eventually gonna be destined for a gaming server for a client. But like I said, I wanted to see if it loaded. And the first thing is it loaded fine. I didn't do anything special. I didn't create any custom kernel options. There is no special at all. Matter of fact, just get and go. The latest version, they've done a lot, and I've mentioned this before in some of the errata updates for XCPNG, that yeah, they've really built in compatibility for both Ryzen and of course the cousin of Ryzen, the Epic processors. And so far, so good. It's worked really well. We loaded a couple of VMs on here and it didn't have really any issues with it. I loaded all the patches and this is currently uh, XCPNG 8.1 fully patched as of May of 2020 and no hiccups, no issues. Now, what about VMs running on it? Other than the place where the virtualization in the motherboard uh, settings, which is weird, they have it under overclocking. I, I guess that's where MSI chose to put it. Um, that's the only change we had to make, so to speak, from default to get this thing up and running, uh, turn on virtualization. And I loaded a uh, Debian on Ryzen, threw 24 cores at it, and it boots up really fast. And that's obviously, you know, no surprise there that Ryzen 3900X is fast. But what really surprised me was, and watch actually, this will be booted in just a second, so go here. And the latest uh, Debian 10 fully patched boots in, oh, I don't know. Oh, it has a one error. Of, I, wow, that's interesting. Funky smelling. I got to see that error message now. I did not see that last time I booted it. That's actually funny. So RAND gives funky smelling output. Might consider not using it in booting uh, non-RAND. That's interesting. It's apparently, uh, I'm not going to dive into that right now, but that's an interesting error message on there. I, I like the wording on it. Let's talk about something else I have loaded on here. Windows. Now, this is really impressive because when you talk about how fast this boots, I am probably the fastest I've seen. I loaded some updates and things like that uh, for consumer hardware, I should say. I mean, I've seen enterprise servers work quite well with Windows Server 2019, but I'm really impressed with how well it works on this Ryzen and we're booted. It's just like a pretty much immediate. Now, what you're seeing here is Screen Connect, which I had in the background um, taking over. So let me go ahead and switch back to it. And we use Screen Connect to manage remote servers. So we'll go ahead and send the control delete. And I already know I have the password in the clipboard. Even for our lab servers, we use long passwords. They're for, you know, life. Um, but it's quite snappy. Now, the only thing you have to do when you load Windows, I'll bring this up because this question comes up. A lot of people say, well, don't you need to load all the Zen tools or anything like that? And I don't. All I do is go here, Windows Update. It loads the uh, back end, so to speak, the drivers needed for the virtualization and works perfectly fine. And once you do that, things like, well, let's go ahead and just reboot it again and watch just how fast this thing reboots. Actually, uh, I'll close this because I don't think I really, well, I'll leave it in the background. It connects the screen connect as soon as it boots up and pops that window over here. But uh, the boot time is like nothing on this. So there's reboot and there we are already again. And it reconnected the screen connect that quickly. 
So it's really impressive how fast it is. It really hasn't, uh, yeah, just doing some demos and setups we have on here has worked really well. I loaded up a handful of other things and technically we're over provisioned because I assigned 24 cores to that and I assigned all 24 cores to this and XCPNG will handle that perfectly fine. So from a proof of concept, the Ryzen works perfectly fine, not an issue. What do I think of it for a home lab? great idea. If you have a Ryzen processor, maybe the one you have uh, laying around because you just upgraded to a newer one and you built your new gaming system with the 3900X, but maybe you have a slightly older one, should work perfectly fine on here. Um, XCPNG seems to handle it. If you want to build a reasonably priced home lab for a lot of power, uh, this isn't bad. I mean, I'm all for enterprise equipment when it's, nece when it's necessary and you can find some great deals on used enterprise equipment at Tech Supply Direct. I have an offer code below to get you 10% off. But um, the question comes up a lot, you know, does this work? And the answer is yes, it worked right out of the box. No special things had to be done to make it work. Uh, I know a few people are gonna ask about PCI pass-through. Maybe if I have time, we'll leave XCPNG loaded on this. I'll add in the video card when it arrives um, and have Windows on here and see if I can pass through the video card if I have time. I do want to do some of those videos in the future, um, but it's right now it's been a time constraint for me to get those done. A little bit time consuming to set up, load games, test if it works. Uh, play with all the pasture and things like that. Pasture can be done with XCPNG. I've covered it like with doing hard drive pasture, but one of the challenges is when you're doing that is it is not native to the UI. You do have to go to the command line, find the device, and there's a process. And there's documentation if you Google how to do Zen server pass-through, you essentially have to tell the DOM0 hypervisor to ignore the device, and then you can find the particular VM and pass the device through there. It's not impossible to do, but it's not, you know, one click just, hey, let's just send this video card to this particular VM. Um, I don't know that they'll ever really do that integration because they're more focused on enterprise where you have, for example, uh, the higher end cards that support SRIOV. That function is built in where you can pass through SRIOV like through the UI, but not, you know, just consumer cards, I should say. But either way, the bigger point is that it works. I think it makes a great home lab. Ryzen's have uh, a really good cost value. The price is coming down on them. So if you want to get started with a home lab and you have some Ryzen's laying around, awesome. If you want to build your home lab with a Ryzen instead of some enterprise hardware, because, well, you can build this pretty quiet. quiet. And I mean, XCPNG is so much cooler with RGB. Um, and why not build it like that? I think it's kind of a fun, and I always encourage, and one of my goals always on this channel is to get more people interested in, you know, building out labs, virtualization, et cetera, which is just a lot of fun to play with, and, you know, it, it's just great. So I'll leave links to the hardware we use in this exact build uh, down below in the description, and that's it. Thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general. Even suggestions for new videos, they're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.